Hi, George here with JustOneDram.com for another whiskey review. It's been a little while since I've done a review. Life sometimes gets in the way of uh, having fun, but I'm going to try to get things back on track and get into a good routine of pumping out some reviews for you. But anyway, the task at hand, we're talking about awesome, very interesting bottle from Journeyman Distillery in Three Oaks, Michigan. If you recall, I have reviewed something of theirs before. I did a review on their Silver Cross Four Grain Whiskey. Very tasty, very interesting stuff, as you may recall from me talking about before. Distillery actually has a lot of different products, like uh, their Buggy Whip Wheat Whiskey and the Ravenswood Rye. They've also got gin, vodka. A barrel aged gin, uh, bah, 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 a bourbon, and I think a few other things, and they're not coming to mind. Anyway, but today, the bottle we're talking about is their once a year release, their second release of it, the Journeyman Distilleries Federalist 12 Rye Whiskey. It's released for President's Day. And as you see on the label here, George Washington, accompanied with some tar and feathers. We'll get into the reason for that why right now. It is named Federalist 12 after the Federalist Papers, which were uh, a document by Alexander Hamilton, which really had a plan and a bunch of taxes and just stuff in general to try to pay off debts incurred during the fighting of the American Revolutionary War. War is expensive, especially back when you needed to borrow lots of money from lots of other nations to do so. Anyway, wow, times really haven't changed much, have they? Oh, it got dark real fast. <laughs> anyway, the Federalist Papers, one of the big taxes in it was actually the first tax on any domestic product and that happened to be a tax on any distilled spirit, any kind. However, 18th century America, the most popular distilled spirit, hands down by far was whiskey, no competition to it, and that dubbed the tax the whiskey tax, which led to the whiskey insurrection or whiskey rebellion, whichever you want to call it. Uh, but the Federalist Papers and the whiskey tax was implemented in 1791, and caused all sorts of controversy, big major uprising, a civil uprising over tax on whiskey and of course other distilled spirits to the point where in West Pennsylvania there's even an armed, uh, an armed resistance and a raiding of a tax collector's home which of course prompted George Washington to send in peacekeeping troops to peacefully end conflict but regardless, whiskey, uh, the first tax on domestic product in the new nation was a big deal because, well, we'll not get into too much history because we're here to talk about whiskey. Anyway, Federalist Paper program to fund war debt, or blah, blah, blah. So, ended up staying, the whiskey tax ended up staying intact and in... Uh, in four, <laughs> talking in circles it really confuses me because I'm talking in circles. Anyway, the whiskey tax actually, the controversy regarding the whiskey tax actually led to, was a big part in leading to political parties. One, the first major parties were Alexander Hamilton's Federalist Party, and then Thomas Jefferson's actu actually a Republican Party. When Thomas Jefferson became president, he put his party to put an end to the whiskey tax in, what year was that? I didn't put the date down. I think it was 1801, though. Check your history books. I'm standing by in 1801. 1801, Thomas Jefferson, good old TJ, put an end to the whiskey tax. Look it up. I promise you I'm not wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think so. Let me know. <laughs> Anyway, enough of these 
notes. That's why I don't play basketball. Anyway, so, reason for George Washington and the tar and the feathers on the cover, or cover, label of this bottle. One, because George Washington was president during the time of the Federalist Papers and the whiskey tax. As well as the recipe for this is derived from the recipe used at George Washington's distillery in Mount Vernon for rye whiskey. And the tar and feathers are a throw to uh, tarring and feathering tax collectors uh, when people didn't want to pay their taxes. Very dangerous career back then, tax collector. Anyway, let's stop rambling about history, though so fun it is. Let's talk about this whiskey. The whiskey itself is, as mentioned, a rye whiskey mostly backed by corn, so predominantly rye with a big bunch of corn in there. Not sure the exact percentages and any other possible bits of the mash bill, but nevertheless it has been aged, I believe, one year in 15 gallon barrels. As I mentioned before, their plan for this whiskey is to release it every President's Day, and thus far they have Done twice, done so twice. This is badge two, bottle 1822. Very limited release on this. I believe the first year they only did available or had availability in their tasting room, and this year a little crept out in the distribution. I believe maybe 20, possibly 24 cases made it to New York State, in which I reside, and there's six bottle cases, so not many came up this way. A little difficult to find, but trust me, you're definitely going to want to find it. Alright, time to dive in. I don't know, it's right off the bat, big red fruits. Major cherry. Some cherry syrup. Hard candy. The soft vanilla feel in there. Ripe red apple. I'm trying to see what else I wrote. Oh, I wrote. Reading, going both off of notes and nose here on the fly. And my handwriting is very bad, so even I can't read it sometimes. On a, this toffee. Dry grass clippings. Cinnamon. Like this, and as it opens up more, and as time goes on, if you really take your time drinking your glass of this, it'll start to open up. You get like these really intense char notes. Not quite getting the X. I just poured it, but in my notes here, I do, I do distinctly remember as time goes on, it opening up and becoming toastier and heartier and ch full of that char from the oak, and it's really quite pleasant. Very candy, very fruity, a lot of spiciness behind all that fruit, though. On the palate, more of that really intense fruit. Fleshy cherries. Candy apple, more of that toffee. Cinnamon, eucalyptus. Menthol, apple, caramel, and as it opens up, more of that char and that smokiness and that toasted oak. But up front, big time, fleshy red fruits like cherry, like really, really slightly overripe cherries, like a candy apple, like those big bright red candied apples. Just really rich, complex, a lot of candy sweetness, but the spice and the notes of like the eucalyptus and the menthol almost get
Yeah, definitely a lot of the very distinctly eucalyptus. It's really, really cool stuff. On the finish, you get like this sweet and spicy feel to it there. A lot of the same fruit notes as before. More of that cherry syrup, cinnamon, mint. More, more fresh mint leaves than like toothpaste type mint. That very herbal, alive, green mint leaf feel. A little more of that menthol. Boy, these clouds really get, keep getting in the way of the sun and it's... Well, at least it's not raining again. Um, really, really rich, intense, flavorful whiskey. Definitely a slow drinker simply because it does evolve as it breathes. Let's see if I can get a little accelerated breathing here. Get some air to it. Oh yeah. Definitely, definitely already getting more of that char, toasty wood. Really fantastic, delicious stuff here. In fact, I've been meaning to get back into doing reviews for a while now, but things kept on getting in the way, and popping into this bottle actually made me feel the need to jump right back in and get behind doing my reviews again. It's just the whiskey I needed to re-inspire me. Unfortunately, of course, right after I decided to do the review, got a cold and I was unable to do the review for another two weeks, so it feels good to finally be doing this again. Anyway, high marks for such a fantastic and fascinating whiskey, 93 points. Highly recommend getting a bottle of this. It is very, very tasty, very interesting, and if you're a history nerd like me, you'll love the name and recipe behind it. I didn't mention it is 90 proof, much like most of their products. It's got a little bit of heat to it, but you don't really feel the heat. And it's perfect. I haven't tried adding any water to it. I don't know how it would go. But a drop or two probably wouldn't hurt it too much. Anyway, before I ramble on, because I'm sure that I've been talking too much already, hope you enjoyed the review. If you have any comments on the whiskey, thoughts on the review, what you'd like to see me review next, leave some comments below. Uh, check out JustOneDram.com, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh... All that other social media nonsense. Cheers. Oh yeah, and subscribe to the channel.